I'm doing today a special collaboration with a YouTuber who I've seen his videos. He has amazing clips, great videos, awesome. I literally approached him and was like, dude, you want to do a collaboration on this? And he was like, absolutely. He did say, look, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I do mostly audio you know, reviews. And I'm like, dude, that's fine. Absolutely, this works. And I watched it beforehand, and it's amazing. You have to check it out. His channel is awesome. He has some great intros. Check it out, his channel. Link in the description below. His name, Joshua Drake, great guy. His channel is called Future Filmmaker 34980, I believe that's what it's called. Sorry, Josh, if I messed the channel up, but the link's in the description below. Go check it out and enjoy. Okay, everyone, this is Joshua, Future Filmmaker 3940 Reviews, where I talk movies, TV, and music, and I'm here as part of a collaboration with Jacob Collins for a Halloween video, and I'm going to be giving my thoughts on Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1992, which is directed by Francis Ford Coppola, stars Gary Oldman, Winona Ryder, Keanu Reeves, and Anthony Hopkins. In this movie, Count Dracula is condemned to live off the blood of the living for eternity. So a young lawyer, Jonathan, is sent to Dracula's castle as part of a land deal, but when he notices that Jonathan's sister resembles his dead wife, he basically captures Jonathan Harker, holds him hostage, and sets out in London to find her. And that's pretty much it. This is not going to be that long of a video because this is already going to be a long video already, but I've always had an appreciation for this version of Dracula because it's very different as opposed to some of the other Dracula movies. It's very stylish, very sexy, very... not a, It does have some camp factor, but it's not all that scary but what i really like about this and that it francis ford coppola was setting out to do something different with the source of show more of a romance story between dracula and elizabeth and i think that was the most interesting idea that i think he could have done with the story this could easily went through the very cheesy cliche route and come off as very stale but Francis Ford Coppola and the writers of the movie I think they do a very good job at making it is it work in terms of it also you have some very beautiful gorgeous cinematography and gorgeous production design here which I think the production design and the costume design, also the cinematography work, is definitely beautiful. It's a very visually stunning looking film. It definitely has a budget for it, especially for 1992. The budget is well done. The makeup effects are on screen, there's good blood, there's good vampire craziness with Dracula. And it definitely does know exactly what it is. So, for that, it definitely has to get a lot of praise for it. And I do appreciate the fact that this movie knows what it is. It's not trying to be anything different. It's not trying to be anything high, anything too out there and too weird to the point where it doesn't work. Everything comes together very well. Of course, we kick on to it. We have to talk about the performances. Gary Oldman, he is a very good Dracula in here. He's very scary. He's very creepy. But he has a nice charming presence to him. And he does a good job in the role. And I bought him as a vampire. I didn't even know it was Gary Oldman until I watched the trailer. But Gary Oldman does a very good job in the role. You also have one on the writer, of course, as Elizabeth. I thought she was great. You also have Anthony Hawkins, who does a very good job as another character presented here. Yes, Keanu Reeves, not his, not the strongest accent that he has to pull for this, but. I don't think he's that bad in the movie. He does do do fine for what is required of him. He's always one of those actors that gets made fun of. And I think Keanu Reeves does a good job here. There's also some very interesting surprises here. When it comes to some of the other casts. Including the wives of Dracula. Which you do see. 
which I thought the wives are very well chosen here. One of them, of course, is a familiar face, and I'll get to that. But the, the cast in this movie does a really good job. I also very much love the the visual aesthetic and the tone that this movie goes for. It's going for a romance horror film, but it works in the long run. And the score is also very well done. I do love the score in this film by Roger Gillard and the so in title song. So it definitely does have that feel and for the two hours and seven minutes it is a long really feel that much. Of course, getting back to the bars, one of them is played, of course, by Monica Bellucci, a very young Monica Bellucci, who will later go on to work with Keanu Reeves in The Matrix 2 and 3. So that was nice to see them work together. And yes, she's still, she's obviously gorgeous in the movie, but that's besides the point. If I had any issues with the movie, I will say, I will say the movie is a little, little too long and a little too crazy and i will say that it does go into some weird places and that you wouldn't normally expect but other than that i think everything about the movie it works it works and i do very much enjoy this and i think those who didn't like this movie especially dracula fans friends for a couple of fans i would say give this movie another chance on blu-ray dvd 4k wherever it is worthy of another chance and i think this is a very misunderstood film that was my thoughts on Dracula 1992. I'd like to thank you so much for having me on here. He'll link all my social media links down below. As well as my YouTube channel. If you guys are subscribed here, be sure to come over and subscribe to my channel for more content. And I'll see you guys for more videos on my channel. You guys keep it cool. Join the epitaph in this. And... I'll see you guys in the next one. You have a happy Halloween. All right. Hey, thanks again, Josh. I cannot wait to work with you again in the future. Link in his description below. Thank you so much, Josh. And before we get started in the video, I just want to tell a funny story. All right. So I was texting with my buddy Dave from Interpreting the Stars. And and I, he was like, or I was telling him what I was doing, okay? And. I was like, I'm reviewing Dra Brian Stoker's Dracula. And, and like an asshole, he goes, Dracula, blah, 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 I'm Dracula, blah, blah. Just saying the line from Hotel Transylvania. And I'm just like, man, you asshole. <laughs> and that's all I wanted to say about that. <laughs> Thanks once again, Josh. I'm so happy. I hope to collab with you in the future. Now on to my review. Bram Stoker's Dracula is directed by Francis Ford Coppola, it is written by James V. Hart, and it stars Gary Oldman, Winona Ryder, Anthony Hopkins, Keanu Reeves, Carrie Alois, you know, all these amazing actors, all these amazing actors in this movie are so well made. This movie is essentially one of the greatest Dracula movies ever. There's been millions of Dracula movies. There's been there's even one been one called Blackula, which I've never seen, but I, I one day I'm gonna get around to seeing it. I don't know. It could be a, probably a good, you know, hilarious movie to, you know, probably watch and enjoy. You know, definitely make a good segment on good bad movies. Or who knows? It might be great. It might be terrible. I don't know. I'm gonna check that out one day. But I I literally love this movie. I've seen this movie when I was a kid. I believe it was on Sci-Fi Channel. It was doing a Dracula movie marathon. They played the Bela Lugosi movie and then they played this movie. And I only saw the first half because I had to go to school in the morning. So I didn't get to watch the rest of it. Like I got to, I saw the part the, up to where he was climbing the building, Dracula was, after he licked the blood off of Keanu Reeves' razor blade. And I'm like, I want to watch the rest of this, but I got to go to school, but it's like two hours long. You know, it's on cable. And I'll, you know, you're like, I'm probably wondering, why didn't you just take a VHS tape and record it? Well, I didn't have a VCR in my room, so I could you know, I had to literally go to my parents, you know, and they were watching TV in the living room. So I'm like, I can't record it. So I just like, oh, man. And I went to bed and woke up and I was just like, man, I wish I could rewatch it really badly. And I couldn't. So I went to school and then I did not see the movie, did not see it until 2008. 
like the movie came out several years ago, but I did not see it. Like I was in fourth grade. I was in fourth grade when the, the movie, or third grade. I was in third grade when the movie, either the fourth grade or third grade. I think it was third grade when I wanted to watch it on cable, but I couldn't because I had to go to bed. But then it was, I believe, when I was 2008. I don't know what grade I was in. I'll have to sit there and think about it. Maybe it was seventh or eighth grade. Maybe sixth grade. I was in one of those grades, and I saw it at Walmart, and I begged my mom. My mom said, because... I've been looking for the Heath Ledger Joker figure, and so we finally come across in October. The movie had come out already in July, you know, Dark Knight. So I'm like, oh, I really want this toy, Mom. I really want this toy. I really want this toy. And Mom's like, you know, she looked everywhere for it for my birthday because we could not find the, you know, the Joker figure from Batman, the movie mastered version. And we looked everywhere. We couldn't. So finally... You know, it was around my birthday, it was around my, like October, and then like, you know, they started putting Halloween stuff out and everything, and I found that toy, and as I was grabbing the toy from the toy aisle, and I was like, and I saw Dracula on the movie shelf, on DVD, Brian Stoker's Dracula, and I was like, five dollars? And I was like, I grabbed it, and I was like, Mom, can I buy this? Can I buy these two things? She said, yes, the Joker says, you don't want, I'm not want, you know, you don't need to watch this, no. And I'm like, come on, please. I cry and whine. I was like, Mommy, 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 I really, really want this movie. And she finally said, Fine, put it in the basket. And, you know, I was like, you know, I was like, I, and I got the movie and I went home and I watched it on DVD. In, and I was so happy because I'm like, you know, and I was like, you know, I was like, you know, really, really, really. I was like so excited. And I watched the movie. That movie's three hours long. I watched that movie and I enjoyed it. Um,. And I said, ever since then, I had it on DVD for the longest time. And I even read the book, which I read the book before I saw the movie, by the way. Yeah, I read the book in fourth grade because I was so fascinated by that one scene. That we, I read the book. The book is really good. I read the book, like, in fourth... No, that's the truth. That's not like I, I read the book in fourth grade. I read the book in fourth grade in library to read. I did not read the book until eighth grade after I saw the movie. That's, so that's how it went. Because I remember eighth grade, I read a bunch of books like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Frankenstein and Phantom of the Opera, which I, I'm not going to lie, I hated the book Phantom of the Opera. That was the most confusing book ever. Like, I was reading it, and I'm like, I'm so lost in this book. I don't know what I was more lost in, that or 3,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I was, more, I was more confused about those two books than I was any other book. Frankenstein, I wasn't confused. I was like, all right, I like this. Yeah, Invisible Man. I was like, all right, I can get this. 3,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I was like, was it 2,000 leagues into the sea? Is it 3,000 or 2,000? Anyway, I was confused by that book. I was reading one. Oh, I'm so lost. But yeah, I really enjoy reading, and I really read that book, and I was like, this is such a good book. And I read this book, and it's different. Some things are changed and different, and some things are the same. For the most part, this book is really good, and I really enjoyed the book, and I really think it's a wonderful, well-made book. Now, I will say some things about this you know, movie. I respect the movie. I respect all the practical effects that went into this movie and all the miniatures. Nowadays, this would be CGI. And when this movie came out, yeah, the movie came out like in 92. And it won lots of pictures. Oscar, Oscar had nominated for, I don't know how many Oscars it got nominated for. And, you know, you can tell why because it's really committed. In fact, this movie's so committed that, like, Gary Oldman and Francis Ford Coppola would behind the scenes get in arguments of how Dracula should walk down there and everything to where even he even like she was saying Keanu's not doing the scene right now, which I'm like Gary Oldman said that by Keanu Reeves it's on it's on YouTube but it's on the Blu-ray of him saying that I'm like wow you know and you know but he was really trying to get the actors like it wasn't like you know like oh him just being toxic on set or anything it's like he's trying to get the actors to be Dracula for like okay look you're Dracula you have to motivate them you know and which Dr Gary Oldman has said the only reason he accepted all Dracula is because he could say the line I have crossed oceans to find you. Well, that's not the whole line, but he's like, I've crossed an ocean, oceans of time to find you, is what the line is. And he said that, he said, he just so he gets that line. And I'm like, that is a great line, and I really enjoy this his performance, because I like how, you know, when you watch the Bela Lugosi Dracula, he starts out like, oh, he's just a guy, and that's it, he doesn't really do nothing. There's not a lot of character development there, versus Gary Oldman, where you see why he's Dracula. You see his arc, you know, from the very beginning. And you see he's a broken man inside. Like, Dracula is essentially a broken man who 
lost everything, and the only reason he's doing all this heinous shit is so he could be ha find peace again. That's the only reason. He wants to find peace. He wants to have his true love back. He wants to find, he, and that is his true peace, his love. And he gets that in the end. He get, kind of gets that in the end. And so he's willing to die at the end of that movie because he has found his true happiness. Even though I'm sure he'd rather have lived with his true love, but he understands, he accepts his fate at the end. And I really think that the movie itself, like, you know, the book, you know, I like how the movie plays more on that than the book. The book does kind of play on that. But, you know, like in the Bela Lugosi version, he's just a monster. And, oh, he's the scary monster we should be afraid of. And that's it, really, about him. That's his whole arc. While in this movie, it humanized him. Like, he was a warrior who kind of, like, and it plays on the legend of Dracula about he was a warrior who would kill people. And, you know, he was like a prince and all this stuff about him and he had a love that died and he renounced God and you know it kind of gets weird where he's like he stabs a cross and drinks the blood of Christ and all that stuff it gets kind of weird right there but you know we'll believe it because you know like you know I would have thought well maybe why didn't he used to get a bat you know a bat fly in or something or you know and then he drinks the bat blood or something you know just something like that I was thinking that would have made more sense than okay he stabs a cross and becomes a vampire you know but like you know, which, I mean, there is, I will say, there is some stuff I did not like about this movie. Like, one thing is, okay, so, this is, that was like the 1400s, or, you know, 1422, and this is like the 1800s now, so what did Dracula do, just sit in the castle for like over a hundred years, or over, was it a hundred years, like several decades, I don't think it was like a hundred years, like, did he actually just sit there for like several decades and just be like, one day? One day, one day, okay, tomorrow, no, next week, yes. I mean, I, I just, it made no sense to me, I'm just thinking, did he know his love interest? Was like, okay, she's of age now, my love interest is back right now, I'm going to start buying stuff. I don't understand what was like, you know, it kind of just feels like some things just kind of fall in place, you know? Like, when Unrise character, okay, him just finding her randomly just kind of fell into place. Him knowing that she was there at that precise time just fell into place, you know, like, you know, and which it could be argued that well, maybe he like felt a trance towards her, and so that's why he kind of moved from Transylvania to her. I mean, that could be argued, but it never really specifies in the movie that. <clears throat> like when he sees that locket in the movie, you could I would believe okay, well that's why he's going there. But he was already buying there before he saw that locket and all that stuff. So like that was basically kind of like okay, well this just kind of randomly fell fell into place, and so. I respect this movie a lot, but yeah, there are some plot errors like, okay, how did he know Mina was going to be there? How did he know that, you know, you know, like, how he just, like, got really lucky? Like, some parts, you just think, well, Dracula just got really lucky. Like, okay, well, he just randomly walked down that same street and got lucky and ran into Mina. Oh, wow, he got lucky and uh, he found out her address. Oh, wow, he got lucky, and he just happened to buy the same property line that's right across the road from her house. Wow, he's just getting really lucky. I mean, because it's not like this stuff falls into place, which, again, the original movie and the book don't really specify it either, so we're just expected to believe Dracula's just very lucky at guessing the guessing game. So, But at the same time, I mean, the movie itself does, it really does, the character is really what this is about. Like, every character feels like they're in place. Van Helsing. You understand, like, he is, like, somewhat kind of mad, almost, because he does kind of, like, you know, just, you know, do crazy stuff in the movie. I will say, though, that the one of the cool scenes in the movie is after they, the, uh, when he has Mina in, like, a circle and the ride the Dracula trying to get his horse, and they, they, mur they try to get him, they can't, so they murder his horse. So then, come morning, he just walks up there and just cuts all three of their heads off. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> and then throws him over the cliff, and then that's it. I'm just like, wow. He just literally. I'm like, one of them not one of them woke up. They just went to sleep after they murdered his horse. And he just went. <laughs> I'm just like, wow, wow. You know, and like I really like think the scene. I really think like you know, um, <clears throat> like you know the scene like Dracula. I, I, the old man stuff never really like got to me. I always thought that old man Dracula was like, eh, doesn't really scary. You know, but I will say the scene, you know, the scene really that gets to me the most, though, is probably the beginning when he's fighting in the battle at the beginning, and then he, you know, t you know, becomes Dracula. That always got to me. And I did like the scene. I did really enjoy the scene, though, with, <clears throat> like, you know, like, 
the uh, with uh, Lucy, where she becomes and she's dra bringing a child down there to feast on, and then I have to kill Lucy, and she throws up the blood everywhere. I'm like, that's that's a great scene as well. You know, I also think the scene where how he transitions from like you know when he's reading the letter when Keanu Reeves' his character Jonathan's reading the letter on the train, and you see Dracula's eyes in the background of like you know the sh of the mountains and you hear him narrate uh, that that to me is also a great scene like there are a lot of great scenes and great ideas in this movie and <clears throat> i will say that the movie has aged well like i don't think there's ever going to be a dracula movie or a television series that could top that it felt like bella lugosi was here but then brian stoker's dracula and i'm sorry if I, i'm probably gonna get controversy for that but i think it's better because it has more better arc and i understand well that movie came out in the 30s and that was made for a time differently and i understand that well i will say boris Karloff's frankenstein is much better than the kenneth brawler frankenstein with robert de niro i but i think francis Ford coppola is better Dr bram stoker's dracula is better than the boris Karloff Bor bella lugosi dracula because it has more arc you feel for these characters by the end when dracula dies you feel for him because you understand you've seen his whole lifespan you felt bad for him because it's like he can never fi have that true love. Because if he get if he finds he finds happiness, people are going to jeopardize that because he's not meant to be. He's not meant to be there. He's an abomination against humanity. And Van, someone argue that argue that Van Helsing is a villain because basically it's like it's a for it's basically it could parallel to today of like okay like or in the '60s where okay like a you know a couple. That you know were not me are not meant to be together. Are people chase that couple out of town? To chase the man out of town because they don't like who he is, and that could be argued till today's standards or of to that t time period. Bram Stoker could have inspired Dracula from that point of view, you know, because it's like this is a you know a forbidden love that's not meant to be. And Amina, so even though you could argue, well, he was trans, he had a, he was in a trance. Amina was in a trance the whole time. But I could feel like I deep down she kind of did love him in a way because, you know, even though he was like kind of poisoning her with his blood, I do feel like there is some part of her that, you know, her her ancestor that's still a part of her that did love him. Even though I understand, you know, Dracula, this was kind of like Dracula, you know, just putting her in a Stockholm Syndrome. And so I will say, though, this movie does have a lot of parallels and he could have killed her multiple times. Like to, a lot of people are food to him. You know, like, Ramfield was just a pawn in his game. You know, but as for, you know, Mina, he could have turned her, but he didn't. And I will say that, you know, this scene, you know, there is some, you know, raunchy scenes in this movie that are kind of weird. But, you know, the movie, it's it, it's it's a R-rated, you know, movie that's could be compared to Titanic. I mean, it won a lot of Oscars that year. I and mean, so it's, it's still, it's probably, there's never going to be a Dracula movie or television show that tops that if i had to give it a grade i would probably give it a solid a minus make no mistake he must be stopped